It is June 1329 and King Robert I of Scotland is dying. Nobody really knows what the king is dying of. Some say it's leprosy, but there's no way he could have governed in the way that he did, as a king at the head of an army with a condition like that. More likely, not that you'd know since it's 1329, the king is dying of tuberculosis, or cancer, or a stroke, or, well, syphilis. Basically, nobody knows and ever will know what is killing Scotland's most noble of kings, but whatever it is, it's doing a damn good job. Nobody in Scotland ever writes down the king's exact cause of death. The leprosy suggestion comes from English chroniclers. Robert the Bruce needs no introduction, especially not now that he's dead. You'd have a tough time making an impression. The king carved Scotland into an independent nation and defeated the might of the English armies at Loudon Hill and Bannockburn. He had reigned for nearly a quarter of a century, a decent run for a medieval king, and now his son David will take over. He will be a strong and noble king. Maybe he's only five. The issue is really what to do with the body of the Bruce. He died in the manor of Cardross near Dumbarton, but that wasn't really a burial option. The doctors removed the king's guts and other assorted viscera and buried them in a nearby chapel. This made it easier for the body to be embalmed, since viscera does have a tendency to go off rather quickly. They then sawed open his chest, removing the king's heart. Not a traditional move, it has to be said. It had been the king's last request of his friend Sir James Douglas, the Black Douglas, to take his heart on crusade to the Holy Land. Robert had never got round to going to fight in the Pope's crusade, and ever since Pope John XXII had lifted his excommunication, he had regretted that he hadn't. So that was that. The heart was taken from the chest of the dead king and placed in a silver casket, sealed with a key, and hung on a chain which the Black Douglas wore around his neck. The Bruce's body was taken to Dunfermline Abbey, where it was laid to rest. The heart and its protector then went on tour. Just one wee problem though, it wasn't actually a crusade to go on. The Pope had been meaning to have one, but it didn't really come off in the same way that you might try and have birthday drinks with a few friends and then everybody has to work or wash their hair that night. So the Black Douglas and a group of Scottish knights decided to run their own wee side gig with King Alfonso XI of Spain, who was campaigning in the Moorish Kingdom of Granada. It is 1330, and outside the castle of Taba, all hell is breaking loose. After a siege, the Moors have broken out of the castle and are mounting a cavalry attack on the Christian army. Nobody knows exactly what happened to Sir James Douglas. In his epic poem, The Bruce, John Barber tells that Douglas and his knights are cut off by the opposing force, and with one of their number under attack, Douglas and his men fly into a fight with fury. They're outnumbered. According to Barber, it was 20 to 1. Douglas cries out, Now pass thou onward as thou wert wont, and Douglas will follow thee or die, and hurls the casket containing the heart of the Bruce into the melee before he is eventually overcome and killed. A Castilian chronicle implies that Douglas died in a minor skirmish days before due to his own mistake, but nobody likes that version of the story, so just forget that I said that. The battle cry was added in a 15th century addition to the poem, and the heart hurling was an embellishment added by the arch embellisher Sir Walter Scott. But it's not the fate of the Black Douglas that you're here to find out. It's the fate of the heart. In the days following the battle, the surviving Scots knights gathered themselves and collected the bodies of their fallen comrades, including that of the Black Douglas and the heart of their king, and they begin the long journey home. The Bruce didn't exactly get to go on crusade, but it was probably close enough, and since Douglas was now dead too, it didn't seem like there was much of a promise left to fulfil. The heart was to be buried in Melrose Abbey, which it was. Unfortunately, the burial place of the heart was lost to history, and although people knew that it was there, nobody was certain exactly where. That was until 1921, when workers discovered a casket in the floor of the chapter house. A 
And now, it is 1996. An archaeologist working on the abbey hands you a cone of what seems to be lead, and you feed the little fibre optic camera into a carefully drilled hole in the top of the container. Inside is another, smaller container, affixed with a little brass plaque. The enclosed leaden casket containing a heart was found beneath Chapter House floor, March 1921, by His Majesty's Office of Works. Your heart almost stops. Only one heart has ever been buried at the Abbey, in this sleepy little town in the Scottish borders, known more now for rugby than royalty. You hold in your hands the heart of Robert I of Scotland. You have found the Bruce's heart. It is reinterred in a private ceremony before a sandstone flagstone. You're there, among the first to see it. A heart crossed by the lines of the saltire, surrounded by the inscription. A noble heart may have nae ease, gif freedom feel ye. You've been listening to Scotland. It was written and produced by me, Michael Park, and is a production of Be Quiet Media. The voice of Sir James Douglas was Chris Moriarty. Scotland is supported by Chris Lingwood and listeners like you on Patreon. Get involved and chuck us a couple of bucks at patreon.com forward slash Scotland History Podcast. You can find out more about the show on our website, thisisscotland.co and on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram by searching Scotland, Scottish History Podcast. Thanks for listening to We Scotland. We'll see you next time.